They can strip a landscape bare of all living things. Get caught in their path, and they can kill you. January 1999, Arkansas. Eight people dead and 920 homes destroyed as an unprecedented wave of 37 tornadoes sweeps through America's southern states. Tornadoes strike on every continent, but the infamous Tornado Alley in the United States has one of the highest strike rates in the world. With over 800 tornadoes a year in a strip of land spanning Texas to Nebraska, this is truly the tornado capital of the world. These huge rotating columns of air are capable of wind speeds of over 300 miles per hour. debris becomes a deadly shower of shrapnel, shredding everything in its path. Tornado power is measured on the Frigita scale, from the smallest F0 to the largest F5. Each step up the scale increases the power by 10 times. An F1 will take the branch off a tree. An F2 will take the tree. But it is the F5 with wind speeds of up to 320 miles per hour, which is most feared. Anyone sucked into its swirling vortex has little chance of survival. On the 27th of May, 1997, an F5 hit the small town of Gerald near Austin, Texas. This is a recreation of what happened to some of its residents that day. The community of Double Creek lies on the outskirts of Gerald, a typical Texas residential suburb of simple wood frame building. They were not designed to withstand the serious tornado. It is the first day of summer vacation, and most of the children in Double Creek are out enjoying themselves in the warm, humid weather. The main road. It's busy out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double Creek has been home to Billy LaFrance and his family for over eight years. He works nights and has just finished his shift. Mm. Billy and his wife, Debbie, have been married for 20 years and have four children, but only their youngest daughter, 10-year-old Kristen, is at home today. Billy catches up on the news from his wife, has something to eat, and goes to bed. Hi, Dad. On the other side of the road live Maria Hernandez and her husband, Gabriel, with their three children. In 1989, a tornado hit Gerald and destroyed their house. Gabriel rebuilt it, but this time he added an extra feature. It had taken him two years, but now there was a storm shelter built into the bedrock. The Hernandez family were to be thankful for Gabriel's painstaking efforts in the hours that followed. Just over a mile away lived the Bukowski family. 
Tammy, Keith, and their children, Blake, 15, and Amy, 14. Both Tammy and Keith are at work, so the kids are at home by themselves. I believe that. That is so weird. That is up. I know. I know. Neither parent no. is expected home before evening. Really? I don't like him. No. Really? All three families are unaware that the weather is about to change. Twenty miles north of Gerald, Assistant District Attorney Lon Curtis is on his way to work. Lon is one of a network of storm spotters who tell the Meteorological Service what the weather is doing on the ground. They are trained to recognize conditions which could cause a tornado. That morning, Lon notices a severe weather front moving into the area. Ideal tornado weather. Around 11.30, 11.45 in the morning, I looked to the north and I could see a towering uh, cloud, a big thunderhead that appeared to be developing uh, that, had, that had literally just mushroomed up in no time at all. And I realized that if we had storms develop later in the day, they would be very intense. Lon Curtis's prediction is correct. In the skies above central Texas that morning, a massive storm is developing. It could well bring tornadoes in its wake. Unknown to the residents of Gerald, the storm front lies just 30 miles north of their town. They continue to enjoy the warm, sunny weather. The clear blue sky gives no indication of what is to come. At 1.15, the Weather Service issues a tornado watch. This is a warning to be on the lookout in a specific area. As it's the height of the storm season, listeners still aren't too concerned. Many such watches are issued at this time of year, and they frequently come to nothing. Lon Curtis continues to drive through the countryside, watching, waiting. It doesn't take long. Uh, I turned northeast from Moody and drove three, four, five miles up and downhill, uh, some winding roads, came around a bend, and uh, there was a tornado. Lon immediately contacts the weather service. Hi. Lon? Their fears are confirmed. Wister just touched down on north of Salado. TV programs are interrupted, and news bulletins begin broadcasting the first tornado warning of the day. Coming out of Hewitt. More will follow. Right there. Moving out towards Interstate 35, so from Hewitt to... The weatherman makes no mention of Gerald. It does not at present appear to be in the tornado's path. is the path of this storm. The storm is heading in a southeasterly direction. At this point, there appears to be no cause for concern for the people of Gerald. Their town lies to the southwest. Lon Curtis follows the storm. Suddenly... Four more tornadoes appear, sweeping across the farmland. At the Weather Service's office in Austin, meteorologists use radar to track the storm. Suddenly, it changes direction. It's now heading straight for Gerald. Let's go back to our other radar scan. This is a live picture of the thunderstorm in view, currently affecting areas from Troy back down toward Temple and Belton, heading down I-35 toward Holland and Toledo, and then into northern Williamson County near the Gerald area. Back Lon Curtis begins to move south, driving in front of the storm. At 2.45, he sees his seventh tornado of the day. I had been observing the small, thin tornado, the one that's shaped really, describing it as being like a pencil is fairly accurate. Uh, near Prairie Dell, that's four and a half miles from Gerald. And that tornado had been almost stationary. The tornado began to move, 
Uh, about 3.20 in the afternoon, it began to move toward the south. I went down the interstate highway, about halfway to Gerald, two miles or so. And that necessitated turning my back on the tornado. By the time I turned around, it had changed. It was no longer a small pencil-shaped tornado. It was what we call a multi-vortex tornado, which is a series of small tornadoes or vortices rotating around a central point. When I saw that, it almost stopped my heart because a small thin tornado is dangerous enough, but a multi-vortex tornado can be very destructive. Hi, Bell County Fire Department. We need to get a message down to Williamson County. It changed the whole complexion of the afternoon, if you will, because I thought the town of Gerald was squarely in the path of this developing large tornado. It's on the ground. Lon's fears are confirmed. This is no ordinary tornado. For the people of Gerald, time has started to run out. At 3.30 p.m., the Weather Service issues another tornado warning. The National Weather Service in Austin, San Antonio, has issued a tornado warning effective until 4.30 p.m. for people in Williamson County in south-central Texas. A tornadic thunderstorm was located about five miles west of Gerald, moving southeast at 10 miles an hour. The storm has had a history of producing tornadoes and large hail. The city of Gerald is in the path of this storm. Blake, Blake, there was mom on the phone. We gotta go to Mrs. Bukowski hears the warning and phones home to tell her children. Doesn't look like tornado weather to me. She tells Amy and Blake to go to her mother's house. Her mother's house is built of brick. It is still a clear, sunny day. Remember. If you're caught outside, seek shelter in a nearby reinforced building. As a last resort, seek shelter in a ditch or a low spot and cover your head. People in or near the path of this storm should take immediate action to protect their lives. Bueno? At the Hernandez household, Como Maria está? is alone with her children. Gabriel is at work. No, the Hernandez's TV no, 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 no. set is broken, and Maria is oblivious to the approaching danger. Fortunately Mira. for her and her family, a friend calls to make sure she's heard the news. Do not stay in mobile homes or vehicles. Get into a sturdy building. Repeating, that's a tornado warning for people in Williamson County until 4.30 p.m. Moving almost due south. For persons in Troy... Debbie LaFrance is alerted by a local news bulletin. If you're in a mobile home, get out. Find a safe place. If you don't find a safe place, and the tornado is right at your house, the best thing to do is go ahead and find a ditch and lie flat in She tells Kristen to go and wake her father. Look at the debris circling around this tornado. Look at it. At 3.35, the Gerald Fire Department's emergency siren sounds, warning people to take cover. Blake and Amy start to run towards their grandmother's house. The tornado is now only one and a half miles away. It starts to churn its way across the fields towards the Double Creek suburb. Hernandez house, Maria and her children, together with her next door neighbors, go down into the storm shelter under the kitchen floor. <laughs> Maria's husband, Gabriel, is at work, unaware of the danger his family is in. Amy and Blake reach their grandmother's house, which is empty. She is out of town. Along with some neighbors, they shelter inside in a windowless closet. The tornado strikes Double Creek.
the noise grows louder, Davila France looks outside. There, in front of her, is the tornado. Ancient Native American legend speaks of the dead man walking. If you see him in a tornado, you are about to die. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. The dead man has just walked into Gerald. It's Mad Max meets Mad Scientist, with a little bit of game show thrown in. Tomorrow, we do battle! Get ready for TLC's special spin on summertime TV, Junkyard Wars. Three special Wednesdays, beginning this week at 9 on TLC. America Online makes the most of your summer. Movie tickets online. Welcome to AOL Movie Ball. Get driving directions. Planning a vacation is easy. And it's the easiest way to stay in touch with family and friends. I use email. I use chat room. Share your summer photos with You've Got Pictures. And now, AOL members can get a coupon to try You've Got Pictures for free. Just go to AOL keyword pictures. Now, sharing your pictures is as easy as email. And it's powered by Kodak and Sun Microsystems technology. Every friend I have can see pictures of my new baby. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. So what I'm saying is that it's a so that's years. Like government or some shadow government. Come on, sweetheart, let's move it. Thanks. Good work. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. But what have we here? Hello, darling. Want a piece of this? You want to go? <laughs> all right, let's go, Chief. For years, mid-sized imports have ruled the road. It takes all kinds. Make room for something different. Believe this. Are you crazy, man? The V6L series performance sedan from Saturn. Please look for me. Okay, that's it. Who are you? What's up with that guy? Beats me. The mid-sized world may never be the same. America Online makes the most of your summer. Movie tickets online. Welcome to AOL Movie Ball. Get driving directions. Planning a vacation is easy. And it's the easiest way to stay in touch with family and friends. I use email. I use chat room. Share your summer photos with You've Got Pictures. And now, AOL members can get a coupon to try You've Got Pictures for free. Just go to AOL keyword pictures. Now, sharing your pictures is as easy as email. And it's powered by Kodak and Sun Microsystems technology. Every friend I have can see pictures of my new baby. America Online. So easy to use. No wonder it's number one. It's a game show for the gadget guru in all of us. Two teams competing to build the ultimate machine. TLC's special spin on summertime TV. Junkyard Wars. Three special Wednesdays beginning this week at 9 on TLC. We are helpless and drifting. We are like a little cork bobbing out in the ocean. Hear two stories of a savage storm. The hurricane that inspired the best-selling book, The Gritty Movie. Storm of the Century, next Thursday at 9 on TLC. Emerging nations, revolutions, timeless passages. Now, come to where history meets the present, and leaders and legacies live on, all day, every day. From the people who bring you the Discovery Channel, comes the Discovery Civilization Channel. Available only on digital cable. Call your local cable company today to receive the very best of digital cable programming. Discovery Civilization Channel, a digital cable experience. Hi, I'm Chris Michaels. Join me and the RCN reporting staff Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock on RCN 4 for Time Out Lehigh Valley. It's a 30-minute show that takes an in-depth look at local people, places, and events from our area. Check out what's coming up this month on Time Out and be on the lookout for the live wire microphone coming to a town near you to get your thoughts and opinions on local Lehigh Valley issues and concerns. It's Time Out Lehigh Valley Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock only on RCN 4. The La France family follows the advice given in the tornado warnings and takes refuge in the bathroom. It's an interior room with no windows, and the plumbing anchors the bath to the ground, making it the safest place in the house. 
Billy gives Debbie and Kristen pillows and quilts to protect them from flying debris and glass. Okay, don't you worry. It's just a little breeze, that's all. Get out of here! The bath isn't big enough for all three of them, so Billy kneels beside it and holds on tight. They can only hope that this will be enough to save them from the tornado's incredible power. Hernandez storm shelter, the tornado is now directly overhead. Blake and Amy Bukowski are joined by their dad, Keith. He is convinced the house will not withstand its enormous power. Defying all advice on tornado survival, he decides there and then that he and his family must try to outrun it in the car. This is the video our crew, James Lynch and Mike Price, saw for themselves. They couldn't believe their eyes when they saw this tornado in Jero. Tornado's progress is unusually slow. It lingers for what seems like hours over Double Creek. After the Francis, Billy clings desperately to the bath. If he lets go now, he will be sucked into the vortex. The Hernandez family prays that Gabrielle's shelter can withstand the enormous twister swirling above their heads. The Bukowskis appear to be heading into danger. The only route to the highway means driving back into the path of the oncoming tornado. It looks like Keith has made a terrible mistake. Just getting some additional information and thank you stacy about that uh, tornado that, that, that came in i'm talking to some uh, tornado spotters uh, that are uh, friends of mine in oklahoma city and now this video that we have shot this afternoon uh, stacy has been uh, is playing all around the country this is becoming a very large uh, news story and the videotape that i told you a few minutes ago looks to me to be f3 f4 at least uh he tells me that uh, this storm to him looks a whole lot like one was rated f5 
of your seat excitement. The perfect storm. Rated PG-13. Starts tomorrow at a theater near you. Once again, a Subaru has received the highest possible rating in recent crash tests. The legacy has beaten every car tested in its class. But the real story is that with our full-time all-wheel driving system, Subaru can help you avoid accidents altogether. The added safety of full-time all-wheel drive, number one in crash tests. No wonder the competition keeps beating their heads against a wall. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. Let's talk about your lunch money. Yeah, your lunch money. Oh, this is the five bucks I owe you for today, and this should cover the rest of the week. Wow. You're the man. That was painless. WhyGigo.com, where you take control of buying a car. Research it, finance it, buy it. Giggo.com, we've got this car thing down. With more of the hottest new releases guaranteed. Nobody brings home the magic of the movies like Blockbuster. Rent Anna and the King at Blockbuster this week and keep it 12 hours longer. It's a spectacular epic that will take you on a magnificent journey. Jodie Foster, Anna and the King, rated PG-13. Guaranteed to be there this week at Blockbuster. Blockbuster, bringing entertainment home. If you want help maintaining healthy joints, the makers of Tylenol proudly introduce a Flexa. A Flexa contains glucosamine, which can help promote flexibility. Try it for a month. A Flexa, do what moves you. Human drama. Creativity. Are you human? UFOs and TLC. A promising combination for Friday night on Best of TLC. Check out three episodes of UFOs Uncovered. Find the answers to your questions tomorrow night. Hello, Meteor. Hello, Meteor. Have you heard about the website called Discovery.com? Discovery.com is my guidebook for life. I learned how to plant an herb garden, train my dog, and cure my dandruff. I learned that most meteors burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Ah! The atmosphere! Ah! Ah! The atmosphere! By 55, the tornado has finally passed through Gerald. But the huge storm which spawned it continues to rage. Lon Curtis follows the storm as it continues south. It produces one more tornado that afternoon, which hits the small town of Cedar Park. But the damage is on a minor scale compared to what has happened to Gerald. But we do know that this tornado has caused untold damage in Gerald now. The Associated Press reporting, as Stacy reported to you a few minutes ago, that the, the damage is incredible and that uh, the city has been, I believe Stacy's words were, leveled. Bukowski has driven around in a wide circle, desperately trying to outrun the storm. Now he drops back behind it and returns to the house. Against all odds, he has outrun the tornado. It just looked like uh, the place exploded. And of course, everybody just, just kind of felt, you know, in shock for a minute there. Well, the closet was torn to pieces. The roof above the closet was gone. Everything inside the closet was sucked out of the roof. Uh, the walls that enclosed the closet were gone. More than likely, they would have been sucked right out of the house. The La Francis house has been flattened by the tornado. Debbie and Kristen have survived, but not Billy. 
His remains are discovered the following day, 300 yards from their home. I guess the wind blew us out of the house. There was a peach tree beside the house, and I ended up in that tree, and Kristen was on the ground, and I think if that tree hadn't been there, we probably would have both been killed because I think that tree stopped us and didn't let us be blown any farther, and I believe that's what saved us. The emergency services found the Hernandez family and their neighbors still sheltering in Gabrielle's storm bunker. Of the house they had once lived in, there was nothing left. But to Gabrielle's relief, his family had survived. Well, when I found my wife and my baby, they was real wet and muddy. Kind of like scared, you know, like shaking a little bit, but they didn't know what to do. They was without words, and I was shot myself, too. I didn't know what to do to hug them or kiss them or, you know, it's just something you can explain what, what to, what to, you know, what to do, what to say. The Hernandez family is with us today. Their home, car, belongings, all gone. The children now play on the concrete slab where their kitchen once stood. A few feet over, a hole in the ground. This hole saved the Hernandez family's life. It's a storm shelter Gabriel and his wife Maria Isabel dug with their own hands after losing their home in the 1989 tornado. The path of the tornado went through the Hernandez home. Now, on this side of his house, five people were killed. The tornado went through this way, over their shelter, and across the street, killing three people in that home as well. 27 people died in Gerald that day. Whole families perished together. The following day, the survivors of Gerald struggled to come to terms with the extent of the tragedy. As the search went on for the bodies of the missing, scientists arrived to study the scenes of devastation and assess the damage. Examining the immediate aftermath of a tornado remains one of the most effective ways of gathering information on how they function. The only real indicator of the power of a tornado and its reading on the Frigita scale is the wreckage it leaves behind. I uh, visited the uh, community at daybreak the next morning, and it wasn't until I actually walked the ground shortly after 9 o'clock in the morning that it became apparent that what had happened to Gerald was an F5. And the signs were quite evident. The countryside, the ground was literally shaved. No grass, no trees, everything shaved to the uh, ground. The asphalt was sucked up, literally gone. It takes a lot of force to be able to suck up asphalt. The full extent of the damage could be seen from the air. Professor Don Green of Baylor University surveyed the trail of devastation left by the tornado in its wake. At the touchdown of the Gerald tornado, it ripped up the ground. We had a cotton field at the touchdown point in which the cotton plant was not only pulled out of the ground, the soil itself was removed down to a depth of about 18 inches. Next, it swept across a, a wheat field. All of those shafts were then plucked out of the ground, flying through the air by the millions, and then impaling these cows that were in the field beyond that. This herd was vaulted into the air, picked up, whirled around, bounced along the ground many times so that the animals had broken legs. In terms of uh, the, the exposure to the wind itself, often the uh, cattle lost their, their hair. They were skinned. Often what you would see is something like uh, meat in a butcher shop. In some cases, what you saw was mostly skeleton. I think one of the most impressive uh, images that I saw occurred at one of the early houses where it was only at an F2 strength. In this particular case, you were looking at a storm shelter in which a monolithic concrete slab weighing well over a ton, four to five in inches of concrete, was lifted off of the ground. I looked for the, the top of the storm shelter. I asked the owner where it is. He said he could not find it. I went back a week later and asked again, did you ever find the top to your storm shelter? Apparently it, it caught into the wind and 
flew off like a frisbee, never to be found again. From there, I could then see how it was gaining in strength, such that by the time it reached Gerald, it was at its greatest strength, its greatest breadth on the ground, almost a half mile wide. And at that point, everything was removed from the ground. It was clear that the Gerald tornado, as it came to be known, was even by Texas standards, unimaginable. Light objects were blown huge distances. A box of checks was later recovered a hundred miles away. Other heavier objects, refrigerators, air conditioners, kitchen sinks, were completely destroyed. They were lifted into the vortex of the tornado and reduced to shrapnel in the swirling column of debris. The effect of such force on a human body is best left to the imagination. Most of those who were killed had to be identified from their dental records. Part of the problem with the Gerald Tornado was its slow forward velocity across the Double Creek Estates. Normally, we think of tornadoes perhaps raking across the ground 60 miles an hour. In this case, it was only moving forward at, at a rate of about 1 to 2 miles per hour for about 10 to 15 minutes. And so all of that debris, the wheat, the mud, uh, the, the shrapnel from cars, the debris from homes simply churning in place minute after minute without uh, reprieve. And for that reason, the Double Creek Estates was simply wiped off the map. Amazingly, the same tornado which was capable of reducing a motor car to a pile of scrap metal left delicate objects completely unscathed. Yeah, I found a lot of glass things that weren't broken. I found a cake dish that my uh, sister-in-law had given me. It was all solid glass, and it didn't have a scratch on it. And it's, you know, it's not a small thing and some coffee cups and some other little figurines, you know. It just amazes me that anything glass could survive, but we found several glass things. We found, it wasn't ours, but we found a bottle of champagne in our yard. <laughs> 24 hours after the tornado had struck, power lines were back up. Within a week, homes were being rebuilt. This wasn't the first time the people of Gerald had been forced to restart their lives. The best we can tell, uh, Gerald has been hit eight times in recorded history. One family that I talked to had been there long enough to live through three of those, and, and um, they just said they weren't coming back. In spite of what they'd been through, almost all of Gerald's residents decided to stay there. But the question many of them were asking was, could it happen again? Is this place heaven or what? Introducing Wild Vine's new Raspberry Zinfandel. Friday. It's not just Zinfandel, it's Raspberry Zinfandel. It's great. Whoa. New Wild Vines. It goes perfect with letting go. No. Leaving the world behind. I don't think so. Come on, unplug for a while. You have failed. Wild Vines. It's wine like you've never tasted. Should I start? It's the store-wide sale at your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. For five days only, save 25% on all paints, stains, and in-stock wallpaper. And save 20% and more on all accessories. Hurry in. Sale ends Monday. Ask how. Ask now. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Ask how. Ask now. Ask Sherwin-Williams. The phone is your playing field. Connect to the world. Access the web. You have the power to do it all. Right in the palm of your hand. And the sound of your voice takes you anywhere you want to go. Michael. Hey, coach. We did it. Wireless, digital, Samsung. Everyone's invited. Our kids. They are fast. Computer savvy at three, but when they hurt, they still come running to you. Introducing Band-Aid brand Advanced Healing. A different kind of bandage that encourages fast healing by acting like an instant scab. Sealing in the body's nurturing fluids so wounds heal quickly. Fast enough for the world they live in. New Band-Aid brand Advanced Healing. The next generation of healing.
TLC. Life unscripted. Showtime is taking this summer by storm with Arnie Ledge Entertainment you won't find anywhere else. You'll see exclusive Hollywood hits, powerful original pictures and series, plus knockout championship boxing. The movie channel is a movie lover's paradise with a different movie marathon every day. Order now and receive Showtime binoculars free when you send in your first two months cable bills to the address below. This is one storm you don't want to miss. Order Showtime in the movie channel now. taking it from that's the way love goes kind of which is really what it was but taking it a step further so it doesn't seem like you know your club video where everyone in the club having a great time a step further would be the south africa 1970s apartheid i like the outcome of it very much The weather conditions on May 27, 1997, were ideal for the formation of tornadoes. The Gerald Tornado was created by a sequence of meteorological events which spawned most twisters in Tornado Alley. As the sun warmed the Earth's surface, some areas had started to heat up more rapidly than others. This created a pocket of air which rose through the atmosphere, gathering energy as it went. As the warm air continued to rise, cold air rushed in to replace it. It in turn was warmed by the Earth's surface and began to rise upwards. Soon there was a continuous current of air rising into the atmosphere. As long as the air above was colder, the column moved ever higher. This is how a thunderhead is formed. Most thunderstorms are weak and short-lived, but occasionally the rising air travels so fast, reaching wind speeds of up to 175 miles per hour, that a supercell is produced. A supercell is a thunderstorm that is of gigantic proportions. Usually a supercell can grow in size such that it spans several counties in length. We're talking about something that might stretch 50 or 60 miles across, where normally we think of a thunderstorm that might be 5 to 10 miles in diameter. This supercell thunderstorm is capable of producing tornadoes, and scientists have identified many of the elements which need to be in place for it to do so. One of the things that uh, scientists look for are the convergence of winds from different directions as you go vertically up. That is typically, here in the plains, warm moist air coming off of the Gulf of Mexico. It's meeting dry, warm air from Mexico. And then out of the north, we have the continental polar, the cold air masses, all converging together. And when those three air masses meet, this is the thing that will give the spinning motion to cause the thunderstorm to produce the tornado. The tornado usually forms at the storm's middle section. It is thought that the cold air rushing towards the Earth's surface at the rear of the storm then takes the tornado down with it, concentrating the storm's entire energy on a single point on the ground. In terms of amount of energy that could be released, if you could release all of that energy in an instant, they say it would be roughly equal to five hydrogen bombs. With the potential to release such devastating power, it is important for meteorologists to try to predict when and where tornadoes might happen. Scientists use Doppler radar to locate the thunderstorms with rotating air currents. As a storm moves away from the radar location, it starts to turn red on the radar screen. As it moves towards the radar location, it turns green. If both colors are present, it suggests there is a rotating movement in that area of the storm. This is the point where tornadoes are most likely to occur. Now the weather service will begin a tornado watch. A watch can cover an area of up to 40,000 square miles and can last for up to six hours. This is a frequent occurrence at the height of the tornado season and does not necessarily mean that a tornado will actually occur. Only half of all rotating thunderstorms produce tornadoes. Scientists are still trying to discover why this is. It might stir some of the houses on the southeast side of Dover. Even with some of the most sensitive forecasting technology in the world at their disposal, 
The weather services and tornado alleys still rely on a network of amateur storm spotters trained to give what they call ground truth. We hear it even. This thing is half, less than half a mile from us. Uh, yes, Harry, we're about uh, 10 miles east of Byron. Uh, the tornado is still on the ground. It's growing as we speak. Uh, we've got, it's on the ground about a half mile in the field. It's debris is flying everywhere. Radar can give us good clues that things are happening and can help a forecaster uh, know what part of the storm to pay attention to and actually ask spotters for information about a particular thing. But the actual confirmation that a tornado is occurring or is about to occur typically has to come from a trained human being actually looking at the storm. We've found no technology that can actually replace the, uh, an intelligent human being watching what's going on. Okay, okay watch out too for these power lines. It's going to take these power lines out. It's crossing, it's, it's crossing Highway 33 right now. Oh my God, it just, just hit a house, it just hit a house. Oh my God. Oh my God. Armed with on-the-ground confirmation from the storm spotters, the weather service can then issue a tornado warning. A tornado warning targets an area smaller than a county, naming the town or towns that are likely to be hit. Bulletin, this is a tornado warning. The National Weather As tornado warnings are specific to such a small area, the weather service has never been able to give much in the way of advance warning, but the situation is improving. We have made great strides in the weather service in the last uh, few years, especially with the Doppler radar. In the, the old days, prior to 1994, for example, most of our warnings were after the fact. Uh, by the way, you were hit by a tornado. And sorry about that. Now, the national average is nine minutes lead time. So in nine minutes, minutes, a lot of people, and most people, should be able to do something about themselves, you know, as to where to, where to go and what to do to protect yourself. Normally, the best thing to do is to get to a purpose-built storm shelter, but shelters are rare in Texas, despite the high number of tornadoes. First of all, the water table is too close to the ground. You start digging, in no time at all, you get water. Mother Nature bedrock is not too far away from the ground either, uh, so it takes a heap of digging, dynamite sometimes, just to build a, uh, dig a hole and therefore it becomes an economic offset. Do I spend another four or $5,000 or more to dig a shelter, or have a bona fide shelter, or do I take uh, my chances and save four or $5,000 and hopefully I'll not get hit? Well, the majority, like 99.9% .9 of the population in this area, will take their chances and not get hit. Without an underground shelter to take refuge in, the choice is to run or stay put. The decision the residents of Gerald made that day largely determined whether they lived or died. Keith Bukowski decided to get his family in their car and outrun the tornado. This is usually a dangerous course of action. Tornadoes move unpredictably and can change course in an instant. Inside of a car is the last place that you really want to be. A tornado will very easily pick up a car and toss it about. Um, what I like to liken it to is take a, a Coke can uh, drop a marble in it, shake it, and that's you bouncing around inside that vehicle. Some people caught on the road took shelter in a nearby underpass. This is also extremely dangerous, as it offers no protection from the lethal cascade of swirling debris. Many followed the official advice. They stayed at home and sheltered in the bathtub, covering themselves with pillows and cushions as protection against falling debris. Tragically, the Gerald tornado was moving so slowly and with such power that following the official advice was probably the most dangerous course of action to take. The advice that we give people to head for inside protection, a small room well within their house, away from windows, that's still good advice. In the case of Gerald, however, we're looking at an F5 tornado the odds of it occurring are less than two one hundredths of one percent. We only have, on average, one every year. And so what you have to do is hope and pray that the tornado that's bearing down on you is not an F5. If it is an F5, then the advice that's given to you probably will not save your life. It was an amazing afternoon for me. It that many tornadoes, all of them within 25 miles of my home, uh, makes it a, a, an afternoon that I will never forget. Uh, but it's also uh, a bittersweet sort of uh, recollection because uh, I would give all of that back uh, to have the lives restored that were taken by that tornado.
Bristle. I don't think we should see each other anymore. <laughs> you read my mind! Hey, can you come back tomorrow and pick up your stuff? Sooner the better. Wow, that was famous. Whygigo.com, where you take control of buying a car. Research it, finance it, buy it. Gigo.com, we've got this car thing down. Tomorrow, the storm hits. Time Magazine calls the perfect storm a milestone in filmmaking. The perfect storm. Rated PG-13. Starts tomorrow at a theater near you. Sponge. How's everything look? Looks good. It's real good. What's his BP? 120 over 80. Okay, folks. Close him up. You're not Dr. Stewart. No. But I did stay at the Holiday Inn Express last night. If you want help maintaining healthy joints, the makers of Tylenol proudly introduce a Flexa. A Flexa contains glucosamine, which can help promote flexibility. Try it for a month. A Flexa, do what moves you. I just want to know if this is real. You met somebody recently. Yes, I did. About three weeks ago? Yep. In a nightclub? Yes. Yes. I see that he has dark hair. Yes. And he's a musician, but he wasn't playing there that night. He, he is a musician. How could you know so many specific details? That is amazing. Believe in us. We're for real. This experience will be one of the best things that has ever happened to you. Try your free psychic reading now. 1-800-988-6563. <laughs> It's a game show. It's a science show. It's definitely not a how-to show. Yeah, unless you like taking through junkyards for parts. It's a comedy. Well, it had some laughs. And what they should call me is Captain Chaos. It's the ultimate in human competition. Nah, it's just a bunch of clowns trying to build something cool. We're talking power fuller. Okay, it's TLC's way of putting a special spin on summertime TV. Yeah. Junkyard Wars. Three special Wednesdays beginning this week at 9 on TLC. We are helpless and drifting. Hundred foot waves. 100 mile an hour winds. We're in big trouble. A savage storm 250 miles out to sea. We were like a little cork bobbing out in the ocean. We were losing control of the airplane. Hear the true stories that inspired the best selling book, The Gripping Movie. There's not too many times in life that you get a second chance. You hold on to it with everything you've got. Face the storm of the century next Thursday at 9 on TLC. Hello, fellow partially eaten fish. Hello there. Have you heard about the website called discovery.com? Why, yes. It has interesting facts about the world we live in and lots of practical information on stuff like health, traveling, and pets. Wow. They even have the news and weather. Of the 27 people who died in Gerald that day, 14 were children. Blake and Amy both took it pretty bad. Perhaps Blake maybe a little bit more because of uh, two of the boys that were, were killed. Were, he just went out to the lake the day before with them. They had to grow up fast. They had to face it. They didn't have a choice. It was just thrown in their lap. As time has passed, it's gotten a little easier. At first, it was real tough. It was real tough on all the kids up there at that school. Some people in Gerald moved away after the tornado, but Debbie LaFrance moved back to Double Creek, where her house has been rebuilt. I decided to go ahead and stay here. I mean, this is home. To me, this is home now. I mean, you can't run away from a tornado. Wherever you go, they can find you. You can't, that's not something you can be afraid of. The underground storm shelter which Gabriel Hernandez had carved out of the rock saved the lives of three of his neighbors as well as his wife and children. I'm proud of what my wife did because if it wasn't for that, you know, I probably didn't have no family no more. Yeah, she was real. I mean, I'm going to say, I guess God, you know, put something in her to, to bring them in in time because it was close. We were real happy to be alive. Ain't no mistake about it. We're real happy to be alive. We can replace the house. 
you can lose everything if you got your family I mean that's the best thing you can have F5 tornadoes are rare events on average there is only one per year in tornado alley but the inhabitants of Gerald now live in constant readiness they know a tornado can strike at any time and that once again they will see the 